How fast are computers? I think we've lost track these days because computers go from being extremely quick, you know, at the, the one level, you know, like assembly instructions and all that stuff, all the compiler explorer nonsense. That's amazingly fast, but every now and then you sort of stare at the big old hourglass going round and wonder to yourself, what on earth is this thing doing? Um, but let's go back to basics. So um, I want to try and give you an intuition about how fast computers really are these days. Um, so let's, first of all, we're going to do it in terms of some of the things that CPUs themselves do. Um, and I want to try and give you an intuition in terms of how humans might be able to do these things. So adding two integers together, ballpark idea. Anyone any idea how fast modern computers, like a, your average server quality machine? Anyone? Six nanoseconds, I heard. Well, I'm going to take it as a three gigahertz Skylake machine, although, you know, you're, they're all roughly the same. It takes roughly one CPU cycle. That is, the delay from uh, issuing an add instruction to getting the result out, ignoring all the pipelining, so the latency from one end to another, is one cycle, which is one third of a nanosecond, which is bonkers, right? Light travels about one foot in a nanosecond, so a third of a foot is how far light has got by the time you've added two 64-bit integers together. And that's before you consider the fact that your computer can actually add multiple of those together at the same time, and there are multiple cores inside your computer, and there's maybe even multiple sockets inside your computer. So they're bonkers quick. But let's think about it in terms of how quick could a human being reasonably add two numbers together. I'm going to say one second, extremely charitably, right? You could, if you were like some real polymath, you could kind of look at a four-digit number, another four-digit number, and go, uh, okay, I got it, right? One second. So we're going to use that as our scale, roughly speaking. 0.3 nanoseconds of computer time is one second of human time, and we're going to use that to see how the other things stack up. Multiplying two inches integers together takes four cycles in our computers these days for 64-bit values anyway, which is 1.2 nanoseconds or about four seconds. Now, again, this is a bit hopeful that a human could multiply two numbers together in four seconds, but it's, you know, spitting distance maybe for somebody who's really, really good at this kind of stuff. Dividing. Faster or slower? Way slower, I heard. Yes, good, good answer. So, the latest version of Intel processors have, got a, have spent an obscene amount of space to make this a little bit quicker, but depending on which revision of the processor you're on, this is 20 to 100 cycles, which is 7 to 33 nanoseconds, or about a minute and a half. Now, again, sort of, it, the intuition follows, right? You know, multiplying stuff together is relatively straightforward, but as soon as you have to bust out, you know, long division, you're into a bit more of like, well, this is going to take me a while, and a bunch of notepaper. So, it kind of stacks up, and also, you might think that you don't use integer divides in your code, and you probably don't on purpose, but if you've ever used a hash map, almost every hash map that isn't tuned to within an inch of its life for performance uses a modulus operation to work out which of the actual buckets it's going to land in, and a modulus is just a divide in sort of plain clothes. Um, what about branch misprediction? It's one of my favorite topics to talk about. It's about 16 to 20 cycles. Again, it depends on when the miss happens and all that kind of nonsense, which is five to seven nanoseconds or about 20 seconds. So if your program is not predictable, every time you hit a branch and the machine has to sort of undo its work and go back on itself, it's the equivalent of taking a, like, a short, like, look out the window, stare, stare out into space break. How are we doing on time? Have I got a time somewhere? Oh, uh-oh, all right, memory stuff. <laughs> Last. Uh, level one cache. Still takes about four cycles to access. That's like four seconds. So that's like looking up something that's on a piece of paper on your desk. Level two cache, 12 cycles. Four nanoseconds, 12 seconds. Maybe that's in the filing cabinet underneath your desk, right? You've got to pull out something, find which book it's in, flip to the right page. L3, 40, that's about 40 seconds. That's maybe borrowing the book off your mate's desk because he's got the thing that's got it in. You know, like that's, that's still, so L3, remember we've got like, you know, small number of megabytes of that on a modern CPU. Main memory, <laughs> depending on, uh, there are so many variables at play here. 60 to 100 nanoseconds, I'm going to say here. Again, your mileage may vary. Um, your car may be at risk if you don't keep up. Anyway, I haven't got time for that, which is about three and a half minutes at the far end. So that's like getting in the lift, going down to the library, going and finding the book, getting the book out, and then going back up the lift to, to where you are to go and look up what piece of information you're interested in. So three and a half minutes, that's a long time in human terms. Uh, with 15 seconds left, disk stuff, SATA disks, two to six days to read from a SATA disk, NVMe, one to four days, spinning disks, whoever has these anymore, anywhere between one and 12 months, <laughs> network stuff, 
pinging the person next to you a week. Google, one and a half months, last one. Nine years. <laughs> <laughs>